Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored and I love you, I give people in return for you nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give the left, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. We'll read Psalm 29 responsibly by the half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you God. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of thunders. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a cat. And come out permanently. 
Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the earth. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all the crying of the Lord. Let's back up to number eight and see if I can do that right there or right this time. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees rise and, and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all the crying of the Lord. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned with his king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people a blessing. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. convert, consecrate our hearts for our greater good and your greater glory. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's our great pleasure. Ardell's in line to be with you today. Um, 
At the end of the day, we have here also Sue Boland, so please just say hello to her when we get a chance to do that. Um, it just seems like I was just here, <laughs> which is pretty much true, um, the way the calendar worked out. And, but so thank you for indulging the visits so close together. Um, and uh, as Father Joseph explained, I guess we are on the, on the, the, the last tour, if you will. Um, I think someone said they're going to get, get us a t-shirt that has all 27 congregations on it, um, so we can check them off as we go. But over the next 25, well now 23 Sundays, we will visit every congregation using one Sunday to take a couple in along the way. Um, and there is this other thing happening in the next few weeks that I want to remind you of, that um, six weeks from yesterday, um, there'll be election of the 14th Bishop of Idaho. So I hope you pay attention to the announcements as they come out as to how we're going to do the, the interviewing and the getting to know them better, um, and then plan on the, um, a consecration, excuse me, no, the election. That will be online, and uh, which we know how to do. Um, we've been very successful in the last two conventions doing that. And the good news um, is that uh, the electing convention, which is usually this long, will happen about like this. I bet we have a bishop by noon. Yeah. Um, which would be a wonderful thing. Here we are on the first Sunday of Epiphany, and we've already, you know, just heard the lessons. Jesus' baptism occurs, um, and it's reflected here, um, which seems kind of like a little bit of whiplash, because it was just last week when the Magi were showing up. Um, and he was about this big, and now here he comes 30 years, as scholars would suggest, um, into his life to be baptized by John. The gospel is all beginning, mostly, with this episode. Um, John and Mark do. Matthew has his nativity story with the, um, the shepherds and all that. And then Luke has his with the emphasis on Mary and the, the, the Magi coming. So that's all wonderful and delightful. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> that's pretty good. Christmas is pretty good. Let's just agree on that. But, but we have this challenge in this part of the liturgical year where everything is kind of put together. And we're here in this, now in this epiphany season, I think, well, there's a, the last season to be determined by the church because it was what was left over. Because we figured out Christmas and we wanted to have an advent and a couple weeks of that. And then, yes, there's this Easter thing coming, but that's set on the cycle of the moon. And then you have to back up Lent 40 days and what's left, as they call it the accordion season, um, of the Epiphany, which can be five Sundays long or seven, eight Sundays long, depending on when Easter is. So, first Sunday in the Epiphany, always the baptism. The last Sunday in the Epiphany, always the transfiguration. So, that being the penultimate expression of Christ's identity, with the resurrection, the empty tomb being the ultimate expression. So what this means is this epiphany is the light bulb season. Um, we're going to move pretty quickly and jump through the gospel and get all these different stories about Jesus. There'll be healings, there'll be you know, maybe walking on water and stories and all the rest to give us this crash course in the identity of Jesus as the Christ, culminating on the mountaintop when Moses and Elijah show up. So hang on <laughs> and use this time as it's likely intended to identify to identify who Jesus is, meaning it's not us. He's the Messiah. And that would pretty much get you ready for Lent, wouldn't you think? If, I, if I'm not God, then and you can carry that into your Lenten experience. So I have to tell you that there have been a lot of moments in my life when I wish I heard God's voice from heaven with that kind of clarity. And then on the other hand, maybe I really don't want to hear God's voice directly. But the Gospels record this in this version of Luke, God speaks directly to Jesus, you are. Um, in the other versions, um, here is my beloved son, everybody else gets to hear. So, and then we tie it with coming of the Holy Spirit and um, the Samaritans accept the word of the Lord, but then Peter and John have to go. And so there's some combination in this picture of, of 
committing yourself to baptism to this new beginning, and then what happens is the gift of the Holy Spirit comes and says, okay, let's go. That's what strikes me, is Jesus got to hear it when he was 30, and of course, he's crucified within three years. But when is that time that it happens for us? Now we can have a smaller conversation. I can ask, how many of you have you, have, how many of you have heard a voice, the voice, a message from God, the movement of the Holy Spirit? And some of you would say, yes, I've kind of had an experience like that. Others would maybe not so much. But I have to note that even on the first of Epiphany and on every Sunday, the same thing is opportune for us. We hear the message from God meant for us because we're here in these pews, hearing these lessons, hearing these words, um, celebrating the Eucharist, and in that somewhere, the Holy Spirit has something for you to hear. Well and good. And we like to come and do that. It warms our hearts. But then we kind of go out that door. And if we think the Lord God only gives us messages for our edification, and not for our participation, then woe to us. I tend, some of you know, I tend to think cinematically and see, I try to see all these episodes happening because it flushes things out for me a bit more. And we note that God does not say, Jesus, Yeshua, um, you are my son. Jesus speaks directly to him. But it reminds me of that other part of the scripture. The only other time when Jesus uses someone's name, which is outside the tomb, when he speaks to Mary, who doesn't recognize him until he does speak her name, and she then sees. What would that be like? Because most of us are pretty sure that God doesn't know our names. Because we live these ordinary lives and we're sinful human beings and God couldn't be bothered. And I remember one time at a retreat, the image, the meditative image was um, pick your favorite spot, walking along a, a, a beautiful lake or something and seeing someone coming and you can't quite see who it is at first, but then you get close and as you're thinking about that, you recognize that it's Jesus. And you got a few seconds here before he gets up to you because that's kind of a moment. If you know that it's Jesus is coming and he's coming to see you, <laughs> what's, the, what's that experience going to be like for a few seconds? And he comes to you and you're what in fear and trembling and anticipation of what and love and, and he speaks your name. And in that moment, in that tone, in that expression, you know that he knows you. Fulfillment of an eternity. And then he says, walk with me. And then you get the rest of it. Let's do this. How about trying that? I know that you could. It would be great if. Remember that conflict there? You could. Beginning in this depiction of Jesus' own baptism, I'm wishing for that moment when we had that kind of clarity that we are beloved children of God, we have a right to be here, created by God, our worth is set in this time and space, in these communities, in these relationships, in this country, in this world, in this universe, we matter. Beloved children, we have a right to be here, and because we know that God is good all the time, then what happens next? It's holy and sacred and God in it.
Here's the part that scripture left out. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And you I am well pleased. And they always left that part out. When Jesus, the Spirit, God said, Blessed are you. And the answer to that hand today? Please know, please be assured when God gets your attention to let you know that you're blessed, there will always be an end. Watch for it. Listen for it. Open your heart for it. It may be a hand as big as this, or one as big as this. But in that moment, on that day, take each of those gifts. I'm a beloved child of God. I matter. And since my God is good all the time, I'll go with you. Brothers and sisters, you are beloved children of God. You have a right to be here. And God is good all the time. On the occasion of the bishop's visitation, it is our tradition to renew our baptismal vows. In the holy sacrament of baptism, we have been joined with the company of saints in heaven and on earth. Let us affirm our baptism and renew our vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Amen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will go down again and judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water of the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.
people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. That our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop Brian, and the leaders of our diocese may have the wisdom and grace to carry out the ministries given to them. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That this parish of all saints, this clergy, wardens, vestry, and leaders may have the assistance of the Holy Spirit in all that they do for our common life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, is the our prayer. That the church may work toward that unity which is the Father's will. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, is the our prayer. That the nations and leaders of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. <laughs> that the whole creation may be strengthened, safeguarded, and healed, that it may reflect the glory of its creator. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That all people, that all those people in our hearts, especially Donna, Cheryl, Bill and Barbara, Mark and Kim, Kathy, Catherine, Mike, and Chuck, Karen and Keith, Marcia, Lori, Betty, Kutan family, Gary and Kathy, Amy, Ethan, Mary, Brent, Pete and family, Dwayne, along with those we name silently or aloud, may have the healing presence of Christ in their lives now and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and raise, rise in glory, especially Lord, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. In your infinite love, the Lord, we are your prayer. Almighty and eternal God, Ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer for the search for our next bishop. Holy God, the source of life and light on heaven, the great city upon the last of the is in my your divine sign animates our ministry and mission, and your life guides us. Bless us with your Holy Spirit for all those who take their part in discerning who is called to serve and in your conscience and in my life. Bless those who are serving your call in our hearts. 
Today, um, Lord willing, as the Cree and the Creek don't rise, so the saying is, um, our dear friend and former canon, Bishop Lucinda, will be installed in the cathedral uh, as the Bishop of Dyke Pop. Sorry, didn't you know, she gets her installation at the cathedral of the Bishop of Dyke Pop. Yeah, it's fine. I'm okay. I give thanks for the eternal life of past brother Roy and for his gentle death. These and all your mercies are God, we give you thanks. Um, and because I continue to forget to put it in the bulletin, if you do need gluten free, please just let the person know. We've got gluten free, I just keep forgetting to put it in the bulletin because I remember precisely at the point when I'm looking at that same line. So, and then I, I don't remember. As a, you know, uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, and I'll put it in the place to go.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth and the earth is yours. All things come from you. And your own. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because of the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn and proclaim the glory of your name. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and the truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, to them, and said, "Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me." Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you and your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ. And his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth and in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you. Who bless and sing us heart through your Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.